Flamingo. What is going on, my friends? Welcome to the Flamingo Show, where each week I talk about what's going on in the world of Webflow. So Webflow teased us this week with filtering in the Webflow showcase. So Morella Prifty noticed that Webflow added filtering to the Webflow showcase. So if you've gone to the showcase before, you'll know that it's kind of hard to find stuff on there. Right now, you can only filter between like recent and most popular or most viewed. But in her tweet, Morella showed that Webflow is playing around with adding filtering for things like animation, interactions, uh, templates, CMS, e-commerce, etc. But shortly after she tweeted that, she tweeted again saying she doesn't see it anymore. I jumped on and checked myself and I didn't see anything new. So I think this must be something Webflow is playing around with. Hopefully we'll see some filtering and search capabilities in the showcase in the near future, that'd be awesome. In the meantime, while we're waiting for Webflow to add filtering and search to the showcase, Gustavo Diaz and Duncan Hamra actually built Webflow Showcased. So this is a site that actually pulls in the sites from the Webflow Showcase, and you can actually search for specific stuff or filter between like components, custom code, uh, full sites, interactions, UI kits, etc. So to check this one out, go to showcase.webflow.io. Okay, so I'm in the middle of editing this episode and Webflow just dropped a super fun project called the Digital Dollar Store. And it's an e-commerce shop selling digital items like a Webflow cookbook, uh, pets pack, which looks like trading cards of their pets, uh, virtual backgrounds for Zoom, a blog shout out and stuff like that. This project is awesome. The design is fantastic. It's got this retro 8-bit video game feel to it. Uh, I love the vibes, I love the design. And all the proceeds of this go to OTTP San Francisco, which is a charity that provides mental health services. And on top of that, Webflow is matching up to 25,000. So I'm definitely gonna go pick these up. If you wanna check this one out and support the project, go to digital-dollar.store. And I'll of course link it in the description below. Webflow team, this is awesome. I absolutely love it. Super nice work on this. All right, back to the regular. All right, next up, I came across a site the other day by Roman Tesliak that is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the interactions on it are, mwah, they're so good. As you scroll down, a browser shows up and then it shows you the command shortcut and the extension pops up. And the cool thing is when I dug into the inspector, this isn't a Lottie file or anything like that. He actually built all this in Webflow and he just animated it fully using interactions. So as you scroll through, it shows you how the Chrome extension works. And then once you get to the bottom, it shows like the paragraph and the text feels almost like weightless. It just like floats up. I don't know. I absolutely love this site. If you want to go check it out, it's tabs.pro, T-A-B-B-S dot P-R-O. It's absolutely fantastic. Very, very nice work, Roman. I am super impressed with this. Okay, next up, Alice Lee's portfolio. Alice is one of my favorite illustrators. I absolutely love her work. So when I realized she built her site using Webflow, definitely wanted to give her a shout out. So I really love what she did on the hero on her portfolio site on her homepage. She has this cool parallax effect, which gives it some depth and makes it feel like you're actually inside the world that she created. And then if you scroll down, it shows different examples of her work and her murals and such. If you like her work, by the way, she has a shop full of some awesome stuff. I actually have a couple of her uh, pins. I have this future is female one and this cosmic kitty. All right, anyways, if you want to check out her portfolio, go to buyalicelee.com. Okay, another awesome Webflow site was Dreamhaven. So Dreamhaven is a video game studio company, I believe. I absolutely love what this site is like when you land on it. The site is insanely cool because it's like semi-static. So it's just an illustration, but parts of it are animated and actually move. So you can see the jets and the hot air balloon behind it actually move ever so slightly up and down. The light on the lighthouse move. There's actually fog moving up from behind the mountain. I'm not sure if this is a background video or how exactly they did this, but Either way, it's super, super cool. Uh, if you wanna check this one out, go to dreamhaven.com. All right, next up, I want to talk about some third-party tools that you can use to add more functionality to your Webflow sites. All right, let's start with my favorite one, and that is JetBoost. So JetBoost is a Webflow-specific plugin company 
created by Chris Spaggs. So with Jetboost, you can do things like dynamic filtering and search in real time. Uh, you can do CMS favoriting as well as he just released auto archive. So I love Jetboost because it makes things that used to take a lot of custom code super, super easy. Now really all you have to do is uh, drop in the Jetboost snippet and a few other things you can get up and running in literally minutes. So this is definitely one of my go-to tools that I highly recommend. So if you want to use Jetboost for your projects, go to jetboost.io. Oh, and by the way, I actually had the opportunity to sit down and chat with Chris. So be sure to stick around for that later in this video. All right, another one built specifically for Webflow is called No Codalytics by Sarwik Shar. And this one allows you to track and measure exactly what's happening on your Webflow sites. It integrates with tools like MemberStack so you can see what your members are doing on your site. So you can see things like when a page is viewed, when a button is clicked, or you can see what is searched for. So if you need the data to figure out how people are using your site, definitely go check this one out, nocodalytics.com. All right, next up, I had the opportunity to sit down and chat with Chris over at Jetboost and just chat about what he's working on. So without further ado, here's my chat with Chris. Hey, Chris, what's up, man? Hey, how's it going? Pretty well. Cool. So I just wanted to chat about Jetboost, what you're working on, what you're building. Uh, so I obviously know a little bit about Jetboost. I, uh, it's one of my favorite tools. Um, but for those who don't know, I uh, do want to give a little run through of what you're working on. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, yeah, I uh, am the creator of Jetboost, and Jetboost provides no-code add-ons for Webflow. Uh, so basically different features and functionality that you can set up for your Webflow sites uh, without having to write or even modify any custom code yourself. Uh, a lot of it's based on the Webflow CMS, so things like uh, filtering lists uh, dynamically on the page, or uh, there's a real-time search. There's the ability to uh, favorite or bookmark CMS items. Mm -hmm. And just last week, as you announced on this show, uh, we launched uh, the ability to automatically archive CMS items after a certain amount of time. Yeah, that's awesome. I think I'm going to use that one for uh, my live streams. Uh, like add when the event is and then automatically archive it. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, so how did you, why did you start Jetboost? Like what, what got you into that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's funny because I, I kind of totally stumbled into it. Mm -hmm. uh, a good friend of mine, Corey Haynes, uh, I wasn't even aware of Webflow until uh, 2018. And he okay. had built a, or excuse me, 2019 actually. Um, he had okay. built a job board in Webflow, and uh, he showed it to me, and I was like, "Wow, this is this is a really impressive website that you built without any code." What's like he doesn't he's not a developer. He's never written code, mm -hmm. and you know, in the past, I'd seen like Squarespace and Wix and some of those, uh, but the the job board that he showed me was like <laughs> a real website i was yeah. wow this is this is insane uh the, the design was re really well done and he told me about how he used webflow and um eventually uh we, we were chatting and he had mentioned how you weren't able to actually like search the jobs on the page uh because it just wasn't like a, a Webflow feature. And so yeah. I wrote some JavaScript code for him and he put it on his site. And uh, you know, now he had this this search for the all the job listings. And I didn't really think much of it. Uh, but you know, it was just like a couple hours worth of, of work to do. I just did it for free for him. Uh, but over the next several months, he kept sending more and more people to me. Uh, that wanted the same thing for their Webflow sites, whether it was a job board or a blog or uh, some other type of directory. And so I did a few more of those. And eventually I thought, well, I wonder if there's a way to actually build this type of uh, you know, add-on where somebody could add mm -hmm. it to their Webflow site without me having to write custom code for them or even uh, you know, give them code to modify themselves. So yeah. that was how it all began. Nice. It's kind of wild, like how many hours 
what you've built like saves. <laughs> um, <laughs> like I've spent um, days and days like trying to do uh, like filtering and stuff using like I forget what it's called mix up or something. Mm -hmm. uh, that mm -hmm. that was super confusing for me. Um, but then you came across, you're like, oh, just drop in this code snippet and you're you're good to go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, so there are definitely JavaScript libraries like Mix It Up out there uh, that, you know, do provide some of these similar features. But yeah, the goal of JetBoost is to just save you all of that time from having to implement those yourself. Yeah. Where do you see the uh, the Webflow plugin space like going? Uh, it, it's definitely growing quickly. I, I swear I see a new, uh, Webflow integration every week now, uh, mm -hmm. which is, which is awesome for the Webflow community. Uh, I definitely hope and assume that Webflow will eventually have some sort of official, uh, integration channel, yeah. uh, like a, a plugin API and hopefully a, a marketplace or app store, um, to be honest, I have no idea how soon that might be or or if it will be for sure happening. But, uh, you know, I, I hope to continue building uh, more plugins for Webflow through JetBoost for as long as feasibly possible. Um, but if there does become an official channel, uh, then certainly I'll, I'll move things over to there. Yeah, that'd be epic. I feel like that's what spurred a ton of uh shopify's growth uh they had just yeah. like a million developers just like hopping on and building things for it so it would be yeah. super smart to see webflow do that definitely agree um because i mean any company once you get as large as shopify or, or webflow there's just going to be too many features for one single team to build yeah, yeah. uh but I do, I think I understand, you know, and this is totally me interpreting. I have no idea if this is true or not, but I could see a little bit of hesitation on their part uh, because I think part of what Webflow was born out of was some frustrations with WordPress um, and how things work yeah. over there. And I know like I've seen it in the Webflow community, like a lot of Webflow developers, designers are against the plugin model uh, mm -hmm. because of their experience with WordPress and, you know, having plugins break or <clears throat> have to continually update them and security issues and all of that. So, yeah, that, that's a good point. Like, how do they go down that road without um, becoming WordPress? <laughs> um, right. Like that's that is obviously a big issue. Um, and that's something people migrate to Webflow 4 is to get away from having to deal with, um, oh, is my site secure? Like, is this plugin going to break? Is this plugin going to break my entire site if it goes down? <laughs> right. Um, and you basically build, a lot of people build their WordPress sites with just like plugin after plugin. I know I did yeah. like when I, when I was doing that. Yeah. So like, how do you yeah, I, like maintain the like quality, I guess? Yeah, that, that'll be an interesting problem to solve. Yeah, I think there's definitely a balance you have to find between just saying, okay, we're going to provide the core features and then everything else is a plugin. I feel like that's maybe more of what WordPress has done mm -hmm. uh, versus, and even maybe Shopify has gone a little bit far, but providing like a good default platform that then has plugins that provide additional features, but um, aren't necessarily required. Yeah. I guess it could be different if they build like an official plugin API, but, um, I feel like a lot of things would probably just work better if Webflow built it. Yeah, no, totally. And, and that's honestly been one of the, uh, I would say core principles of JetBoost and the way it's mm -hmm. designed is. I understand that people would prefer not to use JetBoost. Like they would rather these features be built directly into Webflow. Yeah. Um, so my goal with JetBoost is to get you in and out of the product as fast as possible. Like I want you to be able to 
go through the setup, be done with it, and then not have to worry about it again. Uh, yeah. Because I understand that this is sort of the next best solution because these aren't these features aren't provided uh, natively in the Webflow platform. Yeah, I think that's great. Like your setup process is um, super simple, and you like walk us through step by step on everything. It, it really great what you built. Yeah, thanks, man. I uh, <laughs> it, it's funny because I, I I know all the warts that it has. So like, I'm always thinking about the ways that it, it could be improved or places that people commonly get stuck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but well, from an outsider looking in, what you've built is. Uh, thanks, man. <laughs> um, do you have any like fears that Webflow is going to come in and build filtering or real time search or any of that functionality? What are your yeah, thoughts? yeah, it's interesting. I, I I don't know. I would describe it as a fear. I mean, certainly you can see with, um, for instance, like member stack. Now Webflow is working mm -hmm. on user logins, memberships, subscriptions. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's it was always apparent that they were going to one day do that. Yeah, and I think the same thing is true with uh, like the filtering, the search. Uh, even the favoriting, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure that eventually Webflow will do that. So, uh, but for me, that that's fine. I think with JetBoost, we will just continue to provide new add-ons that uh, provide different features for Webflow that aren't in the platform. So everything new that Webflow comes out with is going to have other areas for us to add on to. That's very uh, true. So. Yeah, I think it'll just continue to be an evolution uh, as the web Webflow platform evolves. Uh, JetBoost will evolve with it. There, there really aren't any plans. You know, I've seen other again, like MemberStack's a good example where they started to diversify to other platforms. Yeah, uh, and that totally makes sense uh, for them. I think for JetBoost, uh, that's probably not uh, in the future, at least as of right now. I think that's smart. Like, not only are you like branding yourself as a a player in the Webflow space, but um, that's just got to be so much extra work to uh, <laughs> have your plugin yeah. work for WordPress and um, Squarespace and stuff like that. There's so many other like variables and edge cases that you'd have to like think about. And, you, right. and you're a, a one man team, right? Uh, one man with some contractor help as well. Nice. Um, okay. He's just started up. So yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think, you know, e even considering the amount of work it would be to move to other platforms, I also just think like the Webflow community is awesome. They're a super fun community to serve. And uh, I don't necessarily think that I would want to venture out anyways. Um, so. That is very much how I feel. Um, <laughs> like there's a lot of like cool no code platforms popping up all the time. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Webflow has like a tug on my heart. <laughs> it's a uh, I don't know. It's just like really, really well built. Um, and I think in the future, it's just going to be even better. I, I honestly believe like Webflow is still at the very beginning of things. I mean, I'm excited to see like what it looks like in another like five ish years. Like what, yeah. what is it going to look like when you can build anything in Webflow? You know? Yeah, it's going to be, be crazy. crazy. I, I do think um, a plugin marketplace would be pretty epic. They could do. I know they're pretty strict about like templates. Like I sell a few or sell a template um, about to sell more. Um, <laughs> um, in the marketplace, it would be awesome to have like the same thing for plugins. Like you want to add filtering to your site. Here's this for X dollars a month. Just add that. That'd be super cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, you could almost kind of see it now with some of the the components that they have. So like the the slider component or the light box component. I mean, technically mm -hmm. those could have been 
uh, plugins, or you could at least like see how those could be plugins. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. So I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, especially with it sounds like they're they're doing a lot of work on components specifically in the next year. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if that was kind of an area that they started looking at for uh, opening up to third parties. That would be pretty awesome, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, what if you could like just drop in a JetBoost like search component? Um, <laughs> yeah, that'd be sweet. And then have it like automatically work with your CMS. That'd be cool. Like not having to set up or do the setup like with HTML and like the embed. Yeah. Um, and just have it automatically work. That'd be pretty crazy. Yeah. I actually several months ago explored um, converting JetBoost into a Chrome extension that would run like inside of the designer. And the goal was like basically click like one or two buttons and have it just install itself for you. Yeah. Uh, but there were a few technical hurdles that I just couldn't find a way to overcome. And it, it was like a little bit too risky, even though it would have been such a cool experience. Yeah. Uh, it was just, it depended too much on like the designer itself not changing and it, it would have been, able, it would have probably like broken pretty easily. So uh, I, I put that <laughs> on the shelf, but yeah, yeah that's kind you, of, you do have a Chrome extension, right? Yeah. Mod so I do have a Chrome something? extension. Uh, yeah. It's mod kit for Webflow. Um, what does that to be do? honest, I, I, I'm very embarrassed about the <laughs> slow uh, pace of development there. I, I, I plan to uh, continually roll out uh, new features for that. It just it's uh, it hasn't quite happened yet. But yeah, currently it's it provides two things for the Webflow designer. Uh, one, people either love it or hate it. I personally love this, which is moving the uh, Webflow breadcrumb bar from the bottom of the designer to the yeah. top. <laughs> are, are, are you? Uh, which side of the fence are you on with that? I feel like it would throw me off if I switched okay. it at this point. I've been using <laughs> Webflow uh, long enough to where, like, I think I would probably accidentally like click on it, <laughs> like <laughs> trying to get something else. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. For whatever reason, when I'm in Webflow, if it's on the bottom, I just it's like invisible to me. Yeah, um, but it's super useful to find you know a parent element and just directly select it so when i've got it up on the top there i, I use it much more often interesting i yeah. i find myself popping open the layers panel and navigating that um mm -hmm. i finally after like years have figured out the keyboard shortcuts okay uh, so i can nice. mostly navigate around without uh clicking i uh, just use no okay. shortcuts but um yeah, sorry, I totally just lost my chance. No, that's fine. I'll, I'll mention uh, then the one other feature that is probably more useful to people that uh, the ModKit Chrome extension provides is it adds full screen buttons for the code editors. Uh, nice. So if you're frequently working with uh, custom code in the Webflow Designer, the the code window that's provided is like fairly somewhat small. Uh, so this gives you the ability to like maximize that to did take you, up the entire did, designer they added that do they really yeah um i noticed it um i don't know like a month or so ago uh they added a button to like make you go full screen they probably saw no your way. extension and <laughs> that's crazy i'm gonna try and and you definitely don't have the extension installed uh was it the extension <laughs> i have to check now yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna check it. Um, but yeah, no, that's cool. That'd be, okay. that'd be awesome if I had to go that. page settings. Yeah, they have um, a little button. I, I guess that could be your extension. Oh, I do have ModKit installed. That might be your extension. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Wait, does yours add a little button? Yeah. Like, so it adds the expand button. OK. Yes, in the page uh, settings. Well, I feel stupid. So I thought they added that. But apparently, I was just using your uh, 
extent. No, I mean, that's the, that's <laughs> the beauty of the, the mod kit extension is like, it can provide features that seem native to the designer. Uh, and that was why I went down this rabbit hole of seeing if I could just build all of JetBoost like that. Yeah. Uh, but that's a little bit too complicated. <laughs> if you did that, would it be a Chrome only? Yeah. Player? I feel like that would limit things a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's the Safari folks out there. Yeah. I feel like after the Apple event, there's going to be a lot more of more Safari folks <laughs> with their yeah. new like security stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They're big on that. <laughs> um, yeah. So do you have any cool plugins that you want to like tease? Any ideas for plugins you want to talk about? Um, or anything coming down the pipeline that you want to share? No worries if not. Um, just yeah, I'll I'll share. Um, I can share a few maybe more general things. Uh, as far as new plugins, it'll probably be um, hoping to get one more out by the end of the year, uh, but we'll have to see because now the the current focus is going to be on providing a better experience, uh, both within JetBoost. Uh, and adding enhancements to some of the existing plugins that are already available. Mm -hmm. um, so all the enhancements that get added to existing plugins are always just like free upgrades for everyone. Yeah. Uh, but there, there it, JetBoost is certainly lacking right now in some areas. Uh, one of the big ones is uh, just dealing with like account management and billing, especially if you're, if you're using JetBoost for client projects. Uh, it's not the best experience right now in order to like set it up for your client, but then have your client add their billing information. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So trying to make some improvements there. Uh, and then also, like I mentioned earlier, just with the, the onboarding experience, uh, there's, there's certainly spots where it could be better. Um, and yeah, there's a, there's a lot of cool plugin ideas that I have. Uh, just based on either things people have asked me for or I've seen on the forums or wherever. Uh, and I, I want to continue to build experiences like, uh, particularly like the the CMS item favoriting feature where yeah. it's this really powerful feature that is super easy to set up, uh, or at least in my opinion is, is pretty easy to set up. No, definitely. And it's just kind of like this, like almost like magical experience where you, you don't have to write anything in the code for it. All of the tricky integrations and details, like there are certain things with the Webflow API that are are quite challenging to deal with. Yeah. And that's all just like automatically handled for you. Uh, and I, I'm really excited about building more of those types of features. No, like seriously, what you built with that plugin specifically, um, I did a course on teaching how to build a membership site and I spent two and a half videos like <laughs> a solid like 30 to 60 minutes on um marking as favorite functionality yeah and and that was like using uh webflow form and it went to Airtable via zapier and then went back to uh, webflow and it didn't have half the functionality that jetboost <laughs> does like you couldn't unfavorite something once you or you couldn't uncomplete it as after you did that. But it took me, I think, a minute and a half to set up JetBoost. <laughs> and it has more <laughs> functionality. Um, I wish you would have released that a little bit sooner. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're telling me. Yeah, that's awesome, though. Uh, I actually had a, a really fun interaction this morning right before uh, coming on here. Someone had reached out to me, and they want to know if there was a way to uh, let the user clear all of their favorites. Oh, and there actually wasn't, um, but I looked into it. And I'm like, oh, this would be a really easy power up to provide. Yeah. So, uh, spent like an hour, and now there's a new power up for the favorites that's that's live, nice. where you can just create a button and uh, add a, a class to it, and it'll clear out all the user's favorites when they click it. That is awesome. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was cool. Uh, and, and they're using the favoriting for, they built this, I think I tweeted about this, a compare tool. Uh, mm -hmm. So you favorite different products and then it kind of shows them in a comparison table. 
Ah, so clever. being able to clear all those out was like pretty important. So, yeah. Yeah. Clever. I like that. Yeah. So where do you see jet boost in like two or three years? Like, where do you want to take it? Do you think you'll have employees or are you trying to grow it into like something big? Or are you going to keep it a one person plus contractor type setup or what do you want to build it into? Yeah, I think a lot of it depends on uh, what Webflow ends up doing Yeah, as far as yeah, if, if the plugin marketplace becomes available, what the, uh, you know, what the like payment structure looks like for that and how it fits in with what Jetboost is doing. Uh, I, I do, again, I've, I've started working with some co contractors because I'm, I'm hitting the limitations, obviously, of what I'm able to do just myself. And I want to be able to keep the same quality that JetBoost currently has, but also yeah. move faster and provide uh, solutions to people in the Webflow community faster because the, <laughs> and, and I'm super grateful for this, the, the JetBoost feature request list is um, constantly growing. It's, it's never getting smaller. Nice. So, uh, you know, which is, which is great as far as you can, launch things like the the auto archiving feature and have people excited to use that on day one um, because they've asked for it. Uh, but I, I would love to be able to uh, just get to a lot more of these feature requests faster. So I, I can definitely see the team growing. Nice, nice. What's the top requested feature you get? Um, you share. Yeah, no, I'd definitely share it is probably uh, more filter types. So numeric filters, date filters, uh, uh, yeah, option field, because right now we only support reference fields. Yeah. Uh, so probably probably though that, that's the biggest request I would say. So not a, not a new plugin, just like more functionality on the uh, the filtering yeah okay yeah there's a couple potentially new plugins that are pretty commonly requested um but yeah a lot i mean a lot of the feature requests come because people are using the current plugins and that's what they need to be able to do more with those so yeah makes yeah. sense yeah cool well uh where can people find you on the interwebs yeah, uh, jetboost.io has more information about all the different products that are available. You can email me if you have any questions, uh, just chris at jetboost.io or uh, hit me up on Twitter where I am C underscore spags. Um, that's pretty much it. Cool. I'll, I'll be sure to link all that in the description below. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks so much for joining me. Really appreciate you hopping on the call. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Of course. Always excited to talk to uh, you know you, and I consider you to be one of the the leading, most prominent <laughs> Webflow designers out there. So wow. uh, I'm always <laughs> amazed by everything that you do. So thank you. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, again, I'll link all this stuff below. Go check out JetBoost at JetBoost.io, and. Uh, Again, thank you, Chris. Yeah, thanks so much. All right, that is all for this week's Flamingo Show. If you come across anything cool in the world of Webflow, please send it my way. Tag me or DM me on Twitter. I'm at McKinsey Child. And of course, you can go to flamingo.co slash show to see this episode and all the links that I talk about in this episode, as well as previous episodes of the show. All right, that is all for this one. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week, and I'll see you next time. Peace. Hello. Mingo.